Oh, here we go. So I made it, made it to the lakes for the first time in my life and uh, what a beautiful place, amazing. So I've driven up today, I'm pretty tired um, and I'm just winging it so you can see just down in this valley here I stopped in a lay-by and um, saw this path, really nice path coming up these fells so I just thought screw it let's let's give it a go um, don't know what fells they are it's not that much further to go and I think it's gonna have a really nice view out the other side along along one of the lakes don't know which one um, there's beautiful light coming down the valley so uh, the only thing I <laughs> the only planning I've done was check the weather um, and on Scarfell, Scarfell Pike, the highest one in the in the lakes, it wasn't looking too windy tonight. I think like 20 mile per hour winds. So hopefully here it's going to be a bit less than that. But I look fine to camp. Um, forecast for the morning is mist and fog in the whole area. So I wanted to go quite high up, and hopefully in the morning, look down on some mist and fog. But anyway. Let's push on and uh, yeah, yeah, this should be good. Right, so I've stopped just below the top of the fell. Oh, because we started getting some really nice breaks of light. So I got the long lens on, the 70 to 200, and we're getting some light beams down in this valley. Um, looks like they're just about to come back, but when the weather's like this, you know, it, it could be like this all evening or this might be the only light of the day. So I thought better not take chances, just whack the long lens on. Um, purely handheld, because I'm just, you know, smash and grabbing the shots. Um, so yeah, went F, F6.3, RSO 400, and about one six hundredth of a second. And for my camera, that's just given me the best kind of, best shot at sharpness, basically. Fast enough shutter speed to shoot in at 200 mil. Um, without getting too much noise. Righty right, so uh, just been at the top, there's a trig point but I didn't say what fell it was. Um, but I met a guy who's come up from this direction, the opposite way that I've come from, and he said the, I mean there's a big lake down here but the issue is it, it tears down so you never get a really clear look right down into the lake, which is what I was hoping for, which is a shame. Um, but he said this is a uh, place fell. So I'll need to check when I get home, um, but I'm pretty sure the first ever landscape photography YouTube video I watched before I knew it was a thing, so when I just first got my camera, it's an old uh, Thomas Heaton video when it, he did a world camp and I, I, I think it was place fell um, but he definitely didn't walk the way I walked so I don't, I don't know if I guess it's he'd come up from this direction but in, in that video if, if it is the right mountain there's a uh, or hill whatever um, he had a he had a crag right over the lake uh, so I've got time I've got about two and a half hours till sunset up here there's loads of places to camp it's just there's no there's no killer view I think you know you be dependent on the light you get but um, I, was, I was really hoping for a view of a lake so 
I've got time, I'm going to walk down this ridge line and just explore a bit and hopefully find a good pitch. Well, we're much more out of the wind here. Just protected by this uh, rocky outcrop here. I'm loving this view down. There's plenty of, you know, boulders, uh, foreground interest. It's pretty flat around here, although it's kind of, it's, it's quite dry. So I could pitch the tent here. I was hoping to get quite a sexy place for the tent though, which would make a, uh, so I could include it in a shot. Um, but that's not that important, really. So we're still a while off sunset, it's not quite the golden hour, but before too long the sun's going to set behind these fells and there'll be no direct light into the valley. So at the moment it's just coming straight onto me and it's sidelighting all these rocks leading off into beautiful backdrops. So uh, I don't have the tripod out because I think it's just easier just a handheld. Uh, the sun's bright enough that I can shoot on a fast shutter speed on a low RSO. So I'm shooting F8, about 1 800th of a second on RSO 200. And uh, yeah, just, just working with the different foregrounds. And it's also just helpful so in the morning, uh, if the light improves later, whatever, I'm just getting some different compositions, you know, in mind. First ever day in the Lake District, no planning, found what a camp spot. And this is just what I hoped for when I thought of the Lake District, so really happy with this. So obviously when it comes to photography the objective is to get the best shots possible and uh, I find that can quite often, I don't know, uh, detract from a fun trip basically. So if the, if the target's just to come away from a trip with the best pictures possible then you're going to do research, you're going to research the locations, where the sun's coming up, where it's setting, where the light's going to hit, what the weather's going to be in different locations, you're going to suss everything out if you're not being there and if you've got time you can do some location scouting in the day come back for the evening that kind of thing and it definitely pays like to do that and i think a lot of the like amazing shots i see from other photographers they've revisited they've planned it they've you know thought it through and it shows and they get really good pictures from that i think I'm all for that when I'm back home and I'm not going to travel very far and over time you just get familiar with the places anyway. But I, for me, I just think nothing beats a bit of adventure and so this trip I just didn't plan it at all. I've done no research and here I am and it's worked out great. And uh, you know, if you like the outdoors, you like exploring a bit, then you know, it's nice to go places without knowing what you're going to see. If I planned it all out, it'd be fun. I'd do better at photography. But I just, there's no sense of adventure. Um, and like, hey, you know, you have to figure it out a bit. I was up at the top, I wasn't sure. I 
it's come down a few levels and then lucked out and found a good place. But I think like it's yeah. Depends what you want to do really, but I think it's impossible to like balance it. So do some planning but also give yourself a few a few trips in the year where you can just go out and explore and have fun. Um, the photography might suffer, but it's always nice to come back with something that you had no idea you were gonna get in the first place. And uh, yeah, that's what this is what it's about, so next three, four days. Just winging it, follow the nose and uh let's see what happens. So just over here on a little mound, um, I've set up the tripod for a panoramic and it's going to be portrait orientation shoot from here across the tent and then capturing a bit of the lake as well and it just shows off really nicely where the tent's positioned. So I've just, um, I'm just waiting for it to get a little bit darker so I can use the headlamp and light up the tent and uh, just make it the bright kind of focal point of the image. So I'm shooting currently f8 RSO 100 and it's about a five second shutter speed doing about a six image panoramic stitch. And it's really nice at the moment because I don't know how well the GoPro is going to pick up the light but I've got the tent over here the lake is obviously a bit brighter down at the bottom and then this village is all lit up. So I think it is it's a pretty pleasing image, I think it's quite nice. have dinner, go to bed, early alarm and hopefully we get a good morning. But yeah, we'll, we'll pick it up again there. Well I wish for fog, well, I certainly got some, <laughs> but it's just coming across the fells, just these wave after wave of clouds uh, which we'll just see here I was making for some really fun photography I love these kind of conditions where they're just changing every single second so it does make it a bit challenging so I'm back where I was last night and I've been shooting the same panoramic and hopefully one of them will be able to stitch the issue is the cloud moves so quickly every every frame is a bit different and because it's been dark I've been shooting on quite a long shutter speed so I, the images might not all stitch but hopefully I'll get one if I do I think it'll really show just how how the conditions make an image so I can show you a comparison of what it looked like last night compared to this morning I think in terms of this shot I've had the best conditions longer shutter speed clouds moving um, hopefully one or two came out okay I'm probably gonna head back over to the tent and look down the valley where the, the clouds coming towards me and if we get a break we might be able to get get a nice image there conditions it's wet if you 
face the lens towards the cloud coming in, it's going to get wet really quickly. Um, it's windy, so on the tripod it's hard to get a shot of image. It's just tricky, but it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so I've got the long lens on now, and I'm just shooting across the fells on the other side of the valley. And I've just been playing around really, a couple of shots with myself in and trying to get some foregrounds with these rocks up where I am. But yeah, the, <laughs> the conditions are so changeable, you're in and out in clouds. So as soon as you think you've got a frame, you're taking it, then the clouds there and it's a lot of guesswork. But uh, I'm sure the sun will be up quite soon. I mean, it's risen already. I will see if we'll get any direct light in the valley. If not, I think I'll make my second coffee and just chill out for a bit because it's, uh, it's been at least an hour of just running around with the camera. getting some absolutely outrageous light across the fells on the other side of the valley. The sun is lighting up from somewhere. I mean, there's so much cloud around me, I'm not sure which direction, but the tops of these fells just getting picked up in this soft, but really rich pink light. Clouds moving across them quite quickly. So it's just making some really nice images. Um, Spectacular, yeah. So I've started making moves back and well and truly in the clouds. They're still moving across really fast. Getting some really beautiful breaks of light. So uh, just on this ridge line over here, saw quite a big herd of deer. And you can just see their silhouettes. They were being lit up. You're having cloud moving across. It looks amazing. So in classic fashion, I got the camera out of the bag, a cloud had set in, I waited, the cloud cleared and not a deer in sight. So they've obviously seen me and dipped other side of the ridge. Or well, I'm just going insane and I never saw any. But um, all across the mountains there's some really nice breaks of light. So I'm just going to stay around here, take my time and just hone in on some nice uh, close up shots, just focusing on texture and light and maybe we'll get to see the deer again if they show themselves somewhere else but uh yeah morning's not over yet that's for sure I think maybe we got a couple of good shots there. So what I was doing was f6.3 RSO 200 at 1250 over a second shutter speed. Should give me a nice sharp image. And I've um, just been honing in on the breaks of light and just fo focusing in on the t different textures in the mountains. Uh, that with a bit of creative editing, I think that they're quite nice shots. They're not for everyone, but I, I do like them. Um, got really amazing light, so uh, uh, I might whack on the wide angle and just do a bit of filming um, while I'm heading down. But anyway, hell of a morning, great little trip, first night. So yeah, first night in the lakes, cannot complain, it was a lot of fun and wow, this is going to be amazing. We've got some uh, interesting weather forecast the next few days. Uh, a lot of rain come in so let's see what happens but for now I'm just gonna enjoy this 
so stay tuned next week for tonight's camping and uh, subscribe so you don't forget but yeah as always thanks for watching hope you see you in the next one peace out